Well, as we continue on in, in chapter 2 of Colossians, we're in verse 11, or excuse me, verse 12, where Paul moves from talking about putting off the sinful nature, that that's the kind of circumcision that Christians have. We don't have a physical circumcision as in Judaism, but we have a spiritual circumcision where we allow the sinful nature to be put off by the power of the Spirit of God living inside of us. Now he comes to another way of illustrating it, and he talks about baptism. He says, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. Now, it's surprising to many Christians when they find out that baptism was a common ritual in the ancient world, not only within Judaism, but even within some other religious systems of the ancient world. And the symbolism was kind of obvious, the idea that you would go into the water and be cleansed, and then you'd come out of the water and leave all the filth of your past life or the identity of your past life behind you, and you come out a new person. And the idea in Christ is that we are baptized, not just in water, but we're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So that Christian baptism has a special significance. Uh, Peter said it's not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a clear conscience to God. And we say, well, what does that mean? Well, he's basically saying that baptism does not remove sin. The only thing that can remove sin is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for my sins. And so when I ask Jesus to come in my heart and to forgive me for my sins, it's not like he suddenly washes me with blood, but simply it's saying that his blood once poured out became the final solution, the answer to what was wrong with me. It was a thing that paid the debt of my sin to God. And I became pure and clean in God's eyes from that moment on. Now, some people say, well, you have to continually repent over and over again to stay clean. That's called Arminianism. It's a form of theology that says you earn or work for your salvation. It's something that is really part and parcel of Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy and other kind of religions, which have a lot of rituals and obligations that you have to do if you want to stay right with God. But that's not what the scriptures teach. And this is why the Reformation took place, was because there was a recognition by an increasing number of, of, of people who were uh, priests and monks and others that suddenly that they were not saved by the things that they did. They were saved by the grace of God. That Christ's death on the cross shed his blood, he shed it once, that he wasn't being crucified over and over again as you take the Mass every week, but rather he was crucified once and for all. That that was a finished work. That's why Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. So that when I come to Christ and I'm baptized, I'm not being lowered into the water so that my sins may, may be removed, but actually what it's all about, and it was in Judaism as well, is a way of giving public testimony that you have chosen to leave your former life behind and you are now a disciple or a follower of Jesus. So in Judaism of Christ's time, it was common that when somebody said, I'm going to follow the Essene movement or I'm going to become a Pharisee or whatever, that they would actually be baptized and they would be baptized in the name of whatever rabbi or teacher who they would come under as a disciple. Well, Jesus said, my followers will be baptized in my name because I am their rabbi, I am their teacher, but I'm also their God, their Lord, and their master. And so when they're baptized, they're saying, I'm leaving any other allegiance that I had to any other person or thing, and I come out of that water a new person who now only has one allegiance and who only follows one person, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in him and him alone, as Paul has previously said, was the fullness of God. And I can experience that fullness in myself because I have believed in him. But who am I being baptized for? I'm being baptized for all those people who know me and who see me. Jesus put it this way. He said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. And personally, it's my feeling that baptism is a big part of that public confession. That essentially you're saying to the world, I'm a follower of Jesus. I think that's one of the reasons why being baptized in many parts of the world is really a, a life-threatening endeavor. I know that in many parts of the Muslim world and many parts of the Hindu world, uh, if you're baptized as a Christian, uh, then your life oftentimes can be in danger. 
Because up until that point, you can say you believe anything, but the moment you're baptized, you're essentially saying, I have renounced my former way of life, my former religious affiliations and beliefs, and I am now a follower of Christ. And that becomes a line of demarcation for many of the other religious systems in the world, especially Islam and Hinduism. And they feel quite appropriately that they have the obligation to do you harm as a consequence. And so I, that's why I think it's always understated in this culture because we, many people, even in some churches, well, let me put it this way. When I was uh, like 12 years old, I, I uh, uh, started attending a church in my neighborhood because I was invited to the youth group and I liked the kids. Um, I wasn't a Christian, but I liked hanging out and there was a lot of cute young girls there. And uh, I remember everybody was starting to get baptized because at 12, that was the rule in this Baptist church that at 12, you got baptized. Well, I never did because I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't about to give public confession. But the thing that struck me was many of the people I knew who were getting baptized weren't getting baptized because they wanted to be saved. They were planning on renouncing anything and following anybody. They were just doing it because that was required of them. That was a behavioral rite of passage within that religious organization. But it really didn't mean anything. And I think that's the thing that's so important for people who have been baptized before and are not were not a Christian at the time, you really need to think about getting rebaptized and baptized uh, in the baptism of Christ that I am choosing to identify my life with him. I'm renouncing all past le allegiances and loyalties and my primary allegiance and loyalty now is to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a very transformational experience and becomes a very defining experience. And that's why he says we're buried with him in baptism. That means my old sinful nature that he referred to in verse 11. And I'm raised through him by the fullness of Christ, that he brings me into a new life. And that moment in which we are baptized becomes really a, a, a sign to us that one day we will be raised from the dead just as we have been raised out of those waters. So all of these things, these things are filled with meaning and symbolism, but they also have some very real practical expressions. Like I've often shared when I've been doing baptismals, I, I love to share about my baptismal experience because for me, when I was challenged to get baptized, and, I, and it was a challenge in front of all my, my cool friends, um, it was, I mean, I, I knew that I was making a public statement. I knew I was declaring to all those people that I was, a, I was a Jesus follower. In those days, I was a Jesus freak. Um, and it was such a, a profoundly defining moment in my life, such a wonderful moment, because I remember when I went into that water of baptism, I, you know, I wasn't real keen on the idea of letting this pastor push my head under water, especially in the muddy lake where it was done. But when he brought me up out of those waters, I mean, the Holy Spirit met me in a really profound way. And I really knew from that point on, there was no going back, because it had become a public confession that I had made a statement, I would made a decision, I would kind of driven a stake into the ground and saying, here I stand, and this is where I'm gonna live my life. And it has a changing effect. So if you are a Christian, you've never been baptized, you really need to do that. If you were baptized before, or maybe you were dry clean, sprinkled as a baby or within some other thing, I still think you need to go through immersion and get baptized. That's the way it, the Bible described it. Sprinkling you with water is not a biblical way of doing baptism. But most particularly, if you did it out of ritual or obligation, uh, because that's the system you were in or whatever, or if you did it because you thought that would take care of all your problems and free you from all your hang-ups and addictions, that again can be kind of a snare as well, because baptism is a testimony of what Christ has done in me, not something that I want him to do in the future. So again, baptism is a very important and significant uh, part of the Christian journey. And if you've never been baptized, and I've met many Christians who have gone sometimes 20 years without getting baptized, you'd really need to follow through and be faithful. If for no other reason, be obedient to the will of God for your life. Okay, God bless you. We'll finish this up tomorrow.